Hi, this is Manifa Renuma, presenting for Saturday Sojourn 2022. I thank Leaf Foundation and Landscape India for inviting us to present here. Our presentation focuses on the nature, people, history and culture of Bangladesh and how all these factors have influenced our design process. Whenever we think about Bangladesh, the first thing comes into our mind is that it's the largest delta in the world. 35% of Ganges Delta lies in Bangladesh. It was created almost 125 million years ago by the collision of Indian plate with a Eurasian plate. At the time, it was a basin. There wasn't any formation of land. The Ganges and the Brahmaputra created through the Himalaya deposited their alluvial soil here in the basin eventually resulting the delta. This land was avoided by the Vedics because, it's, because of its obscuredness. If we see this image from NASA, it clearly shows that the aquatic veins are inserting in the, in the basin. Almost every external ruler used to avoid this place. Funnily, according to Ibn Battuta, Bengal was Dozakpuri Niamat, means hell full of bounty. Because our land is so fertile, anything and everything grows here just like magic beans. These are what Bangladesh comprises of. The genius low size is embedded in the uniqueness of the delta. Intertwined with 257 rivers, flora, fauna, architecture, geography, inspirational figures, the history, the literature, all are interconnected in this deltaic language. To understand the culture of Bangladesh, we have to look deeply into our nature. In April, we celebrate Bengali New Year by eating panta and ilish. The heat is relieved through monsoon rain from mid-June to mid-August. Later on, we see the ripening of paddy field, the whiteness of kashful, and also we feel the coolness in the air in the late autumn. By harvesting the rice, we celebrate Nobanno in this season. When the winter comes, we observe, purging in the nature. The leaves falls, we see the skeletons of trees. The color is given back and nature gets back into life in spring. But let me tell you, all these changes are hard to observe in the city. One must go to the suburb or village to feel the changes. We have many forms of ethnic and religious festivals. Durga Puja, Idul Fitr, Buddha Purnima, Christmas are to name a few. Let's have a look into the geophysical attributes of Bangladesh. 80% of the land is inundated through Ganges, Brahmaputra and Meghna floodplains. As we can see, there are ranges of hills on our eastern side expanding from south to north. 8% of the land is old Pleistocene soil. The soil is raised here. North of Dhaka is part of this tract. On the southwestern corner, we have the tidal active delta where Sundarban is situated. Here, salinity is rising with climate change. From these geophysical attributes, we have gathered information about four types of forests. Here, it's the hill forest that lies on the southeastern fringe of the country. It's a mixed evergreen forest. Tall species of Bengal can be found here. At the heart of Bangladesh, we have Sal forest, which is a deciduous forest. Dhaka used to be a part of its extended area. Madhupur tract we talked about earlier is the key feature of Powell. The Sundarban on the southwest corner of the country has its other part on the West Bengal, India. It's also the home to Royal Bengal tiger. The mangrove has two parts. One is saline mangrove and the other is the freshwater mangrove. For such a small country, we have a myriad types of forests. This one, the last one I'm presenting, is one of the rarest forests in the world, the Ratargul, a freshwater forest. It's home to monkey, egret, vultures and freshwater aquatic plants which can be found around Bangladesh. To understand the landscape style of Bangladesh, we have carefully articulated the historical timeline of architecture in Bengal briefly. Because to absorb landscape, we must follow the evolution of architecture through ages. Buddhist Paladeva, Indo Terracotta, Mughal architecture, colonial architecture, all are dotted in this riverine landscape of Bengal. 
Messrs. Dickinson illustrated a colonialist cityscape of Dhaka beside the Buriganga. The post-colonial period reflects the modernist, brutalist architecture style of then contemporary world, mostly government institutional buildings. Post-liberation war to present day, the architecture of Bangladesh is still evolving. It again reflects the sophistication of complex programs from technically sound buildings of architect Mustafa Khalid Polash to Arum building of architect Patrick Di Rosario to architect Kashef Mahbub's Friendship Hospital. Talking about architecture of Bangladesh will be incomplete without reflecting on the works of architect Majar Islam Sar. Majar Islam Khan was a pioneer architect of Bangladesh. His works from the 1950s onwards not only signaled the advent of modernism in Bangladesh, then East Pakistan, but almost overnight introduced a fresh culture of architecture. Here we can see his master plans of fine art institutes to Jahangir Nagar University master plan, the mega project woven in the Delta landscape. I was asked how Louis Icahn has any influence on our landscape design as his most cherished work, IIM is in Ahmedabad, India. Khan had showed how to create a modern citadel beside water and green to the generation, generations of architects to come in Bangladesh. Major Islam Khan had brought Louis Icahn to design the parliament building. Khan had suggested lately that in Bangladesh, one must be a land architect responding to the lucid landscape. As we move on, we try to investigate the available written or built example of landscape planning and design in history of Bengal. The earliest account is available of Kona, an astrologer of rar area. Here the subcontinental political boundary is considered. We tried to frame the Mughal influence along with colonial influence which shaped modern Dhaka. Kona was an astrologer reflecting the vegetal landscape of the era. In 12th century Bengal, Bihar, Assam, agriculture magazines were in use by the farmers. There's a story. Farmers during the reign of Bengali King Vikramaditya faced problems with weather forecasts, seasonal plantations, when to plow for better yielding. So, Kona made an astronomical predictions, which soon became true, and she became popular. They are, in fact, still in use. Some of them we can see on the screen. Pubehash Pushime Bash Uttore Bere Dokkinichere, which means on the east of a house one will find duck on pond, bamboo on the west to cut scorching heat off waste. On the north, one should plant banana, and the south should be left open for better airflow and full bright sun in this region. There's another maxim which says, Nimnishinda jotha, manushki more totha, which says, will anyone fall ill or die if there's neem and Chinese chest trees? 13th century Shunya Puran is also worth mentioning. Written by Ramai Pandit, it had five chapters. One was called Dhaner Jonmo. How Dhan or rice took birth from the semens of Lord Shiva. And at that time, Bengal and Rar area had the only religion of farming. Lord Shiva as the farmer lord has been depicted here. Through Shunya Puran, we can see the floriculture of the Middle Age Bengal where Sultani dynasty was emerging parallelly. We can find the local native plants used for the Dharma Puja of Dharmaraj in Pushpotolan rituals. Gradually, our focus moves to Dhaka because the Mughal landscape design is found here through walled gardens, forts and architecture. The Mughals established Janginagar in Dhaka and brought their Persian-influenced Indo-Islamic landscape gardens and elements into this deltaic flat plain. The grid iron patterns, exotic plants, wild gardens were introduced. And it was a very new concept in this subcontinent. The image depicts the technique of Mughal gardening from Diwani Anwari. As the British took over the Mughal territory, the usage of old Bag, Bagi Batshai, Katras were converted for new usage. Charles Dawes cleared the Ramna and created a racecourse arena. Mr. Proudlock was appointed as a head arboriculturist. He introduced Malai Padau plants 
which we still find beside the Ramna Road site. We jump back to West Bengal again to Shantiniketan because without mentioning Ratindranath Tagore, the whole story won't be fulfilled. Ratindranath Tagore, son of Rabindranath Tagore, designed many exotic gardens, Japanese style, Mughal style in Shantiniketan. He experimented with the plantation of several exotic trees inside the ashram, which was supervised by Rabindranath Tagore himself. He built a soil testing laboratory, imported plant seeds, borrowed tractors, and customized the farming equipments. This created a new trend in gardening in Bengal. On this side of Bengal, in Dhaka, there was an uprising competition of varied garden houses. Balda Garden by Zaminder Nar Narendra Narayan Choudhury was an epitome of display of local and exotic plants. Parallelly, Rose Garden Fairly House was established by Zamindars and British officials. Dwijan Sharma, a Bangladeshi naturalist, botanist and writer who contributed in the civic landscape design of Bangladesh. He urged the necessity of nat native plantation in urban context and prescribed it through his writing. He wrote 30 books on nature and plants of Bangladesh. After liberation war, we find war memorials and monuments of mega scale in lush fluid settings. During 90s, there was only Dhanmondi Lake for Dhaka city dwellers to breathe the fresh air after Ramna. Later on, from 2015 onwards, we have seen a surge in restoring the parks and playgrounds of Dhaka North and South. Another finer example of community-involved landscape design is found in Jinaida of reclaiming old Noboganga River and public space. I hope everyone is still listening the previous studies are all somehow implanted deeply in our subconscious. It will reflect in the upcoming presentation about and audience projects. We have experimented and took challenges. Often, we do exercise our skills and took over voluntary initiatives. Most of our projects deal with ecology, history, settlement and gardening. This is our very first project. Usually, the mosque premises have courtyards of hard surfaces. The prayer, prayer hall was grounded into the green. This place by nature demanded a scaled down building emerging from the soft landscape where the users come mostly barefooted. We opted for a solution which will be both pervious and impervious. We created surface which works as a sieve so that the water flows relentlessly. In a small village, it was a challenge to subdue the presence of the mosque in the landscape. It's a story of hanging gardens in the dense urban setting of Dhaka. The raw landscape of Bengal has been inserted into the busy commercial building. The sketch shows in the beginning, we had proposed a vegetal landscape where pop-up decks would float on the sea of green. We tried to create a moist landscape on the roof and planted a welcoming chatim tree at the entry plaza, who stands tall. It silently merges with the ultra urban setting with its nativeness. If we remember Ratargul, where hijol tree is found, has been planted on the rooftop of Impetus on the way to swimming pool. Alocasia is a common plant beside ponds in villages. Instead of formal setup, we tried to create an outdoor of lush, ordinary shrubs. We experimented with the details and everyone will find their nooks and niches in this setting. Padgati Shashan in Tungipara is a temple complex comprises of mandir, nut mandir and crematorium. The mild sloped flood plain of Madhumati River helped to form the master plan which sits at the end of the road, surrounded by homesteads. A 9 into 60 meter narrow site at the entrance, there was a ficus bengalensis, the bodgaj, which we tried to preserve, as it has both ecological and religious significance. In this narrow site, the community demanded to keep a regular circulation for them, so that they can easily go to the other side of the temple. The perforated boundary 
and plaza made of bricks are inspired from the local crafts of wheat patibet. Faridpur graveyard gave an opportunity to recreate the concept of paradise, the wild garden from Quran. It all started with boundary design for the privacy, where delineation is very important. After burial in rural context, it's essential to keep safe the boundary. Boundary has become an essential element of our landscape design. We took the social challenge to define a dystopia where the territory of the outer world ends. The Mughal gridiron planning and sitting pavilions were the key guiding factors. At the entrance, there's a pond on the eastern side and an idga on the west, creating a gateway for afterlife. Idga at Gopal Ganj, a space for congregational prayer during the celebration of Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. In an urban context, it's difficult to create a massive backdrop for Idga. In a rural semi-suburban sub context, this Idga has become a social icon. It has created a place of belongingness. It's a frozen element in the lush green, while it has a measurable dimension in this digital era. Also, other than the congregational prayer, twice a year, walkways, sitting areas, native planting pallets, for community have been integrated. Cox's Bazaar 5 km Road Urban Design Regeneration Project was a great challenging project where we were the landscape consultant to DPM. Local boats, Burmese market, beach were the design inspirations. It's a tourist city of seasonal tourists. Last year, during the New Year season, there were almost 10 lakh, 1 million local tourists flooded the city. Beyond standard practice, the encroachment, urban sprawls are regular dysfunctionalities. As developing country, creating a new standard for road with pedestrians and facilities with basic amenities were the very basic challenges. A saline prone soil, Low maintenance material was selected for bridges and toilets and other amenities. Colorful surfaces designed by artist Schumann Paul were proposed to invoke memories. The diaspora of the Barmese market was brought by the Barmese broken design, which we implemented it into a pavement pattern. Each project is a milestone. Anino Shakhat was a great initiative by the local government engineering department of Bangladesh. It's an interactive memorial where one moves through it, absorbing the intense relationship between Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman and Hussein Shahid Sorawardi. The glass wall represents Sorawardi, who illuminated young Bangabandhu. Thus, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman emerges as a strong leader which is symbolized through this red wall. Last but not least, Bangladesh Academy of Rural Development was designed by Doxiadis in 1960s, who created the master plan of Islamabad. It was initiated by Akhtar Hamid Khan. The project was commissioned to Deacon and Bhumijo JV as consultant, and later on, we joined on as landscape consultant. We got the opportunity to do the rigorous site analysis for this 54 acre of land, which is a very rare occasion for us. Because the site analysis of an architect differs from landscape architect's perspective. The team's co-partners were also appreciative toward the role we played naturally, naturally through our practice and iterations. As we are in an architect-dominated society, there remains rare scopes to hone our skills in such projects. This slide shows our rigorous analysis process. And finally, we emerge with the proposal where pedestrian circulation was designed through promenade and shaded walkways. Toxiades was inspired by the Mughal pavilion-styled architecture. Keeping that in mind, we enhanced and elongated this circulation into the heart of the master plan. 
where all the public amenities like the sports centers, the tanks, the hostels are connected through single line of spine. This area, Bird, is situated on Lalmai Pahar, which used to be a part of Lalambi forest full of medicinal plants. There is a beautiful story in Ramayan that Hanuman was going to rescue Lakshman by lifting a huge mountain from Himalaya. During the flight with Sanjeevani, a tiny droplet fell here and the meat has, it's been growing as Lalambi forest since then. But with time, the flora and fauna was lost. We can find some similarities of hill track flora and faunas. However, during the mid 80s and 90s, the area was planted with fastest revenue earning plants like acacia, mahogany, which eventually have played a negative role for the environment. With response to that, we proposed a plantation scheme phase by phase for each zone, emphasizing seasonal and native varieties. These are the unrealized projects. The first one is the garden house in Kirani Ganj of Minister Nazrul Hamid Bibi. We tried to create a beautiful tropical palette of native floras surrounding his existing mango trees of his ancestral house. NHJ playground lies at the heart of Dhaka city. It's a very old playground surrounded by elite residential area. Skating ground, age-based plays, jogging tracks, sitting areas, and native plantations were key features of this playground design. So what's next? Emerging profession, I believe landscape architecture holds lots of hopes. Because in the upcoming world where the climate change is the biggest issue, I believe landscape architects have the greatest opportunity to rejuvenate, preserve, and conserve the nature. In fact, in mega projects, the government of Bangladesh has imposed a mandatory criteria to intake landscape architects in design team. By 2030, the Sustainable Development Goal aims to achieve sustainable cities and communities, life below water and life on land, where landscape architects will play a vital role. There is a dying need of educating our upcoming generations of professionals, co-consultants, architects and planners and educators. We need to establish a dialogue to start the pedagogy in landscape architecture in Bangladesh. As an individual IFLA member, my fellow landscape architects and I are in a process of creating a new platform for landscape architects in Bangladesh. On the right, the picture represents my participation in a hackathon arranged by Delta Riz, who are doing the 100 years Delta plan with dreams of new beginning and hopes. I end my presentation here today. Thank you for listening to me. I dedicate this presentation to my late daughter, Nawal Fatiha Hassan.